Do you ever struggle when trying to interpret blood gases? I know that was always so hard for me. Working in the NICU as a bedside nurse, I never felt that confident whenever I would look at a blood gas being able to interpret it. Hey, I'm Amanda. I'm a neonatal clinical nurse specialist, and this is my series where I'm talking about some of my most popular posts on Instagram. And today I want to talk a little bit about blood gas interpretation. So first things first, like what is a blood gas and why do we care? Blood gas tells us about a baby's ventilation, their oxygenation, and their acid-base status. It's one of the most common labs that we get when we're caring for a baby in the NICU, especially because one of the most common reasons babies end up in the NICU is for respiratory purposes, but also a lot of our babies have issues with metabolic needs. And so we get a lot of blood gases and struggling to interpret them is a challenge of many NICU nurses. So let's talk about blood gas interpretation. When we look at a blood gas, there's several different measures that we are looking at. There's the pH, which tells us how acidic is the blood. There's the CO2, which is telling us about carbon dioxide levels. How well is that baby able to excrete carbon dioxide? The only way we can excrete carbon dioxide is through our lungs by exhaling. It tells us about bicarbonate, which is an important buffer that's in our blood that is excreted through or retained by the kidneys. And it also tells us about this base excess or deficit, and that specifically always confused me. So make sure to stay to the end to understand the base a little bit better. But first, what is normal? So pH values normally are anywhere from 7.35 to 7.45. This can vary with age, but typically for neonates, greater than 7.3 are considered acceptable. And a brand new baby who is just born in the first 24 hours, their pH is typically a little bit lower. They just came from this very, the in utero environment is a little different. It's a little more acidotic, a little more hypoxic, and it's not quite the same. So that transition takes some time. What's our normal CO2? So CO2 normally is about 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. But in many babies in the NICU, we will accept higher CO2s than 45. It's called permissive hypercapnia. And we provide that so that we don't have to overventilate the lungs or cause more barotrauma or volutrauma to the lungs to try and drive that CO2 down. So oftentimes 45 is perfectly acceptable, even 50. We're, we're pretty happy if it's a baby with respiratory distress syndrome or evolving BPD. And then our bicarbonate, so our bicarbonate reflects that metabolic component of that acid-base balance. And normally it should be about 22 to 26, but that varies based on that baby's gestational age. It may be as low as 19 to 22 in the first 48 hours of life, and that is considered normal. Now, what is the base excess or base deficit? What does that mean? So the base indicates the amount of base that's required to titrate the blood pH back up to normal. So how much base or how much buffer is needed to bring that pH back to normal? So sometimes we see where it's significantly negative or in a significant base deficit when we have a baby who is in a severe metabolic acidosis. I talked about that a little bit in my HIE video. There's many ways that we can sample blood gases, right? We can get an arterial sample, we can get a capillary sample via a heel stick, or we could get a venous sample through a venipuncture. And there's different pros and cons of each. So our arterial sample is gonna be the best for assessing oxygenation of that baby. We'll best understand how well are the tissues being oxygenated when we have an arterial sample. But we don't have an arterial line all the time and it's pretty painful to do arterial punctures all the time. So we don't always get arterial blood gases. We can most often get a capillary blood gas, which is via heel stick. Also can be painful, but it also can be pretty accurate. So it's used and it's reliable for our pH and our CO2, but it is not reliable for your PaO2. It's not going to be reliable for your oxygen status. And then we can also get a venous blood gas. This can be helpful, but it will be a little bit more acidotic and your CO2 might be a little bit higher than it would have been in an arterial or a capillary sample. So let's go step by step and how to interpret a blood gas. 
First things first, you're going to look at the pH and you're going to think to yourself, is my pH normal? Is it low or is it high? So if it's normal, that means that either your blood gas is normal or your blood gas is compensated. And I'm not going to get too much into compensated today, but that is something to think about. If it's low, then we know that there is acidosis. And acidosis is one of the most common things that we see in the NICU. But if it's high, that indicates alkalosis. Next, we're gonna look at our CO2. So again, is our CO2 normal? Is it low or is it high? When we have a low pH and a high CO2, then we know that there's a component of respiratory acidosis. Carbon dioxide is an acid. And if we have a lot of it getting stuck in the body, not being able to be excreted because the baby can't ventilate well, then we have respiratory acidosis. That buildup of CO2 is going to pull the pH down. Okay. Now, what about our bicarbonate? So if our bicarbonate is low, that also contributes to acidosis. Remember that bicarb is a buffer. It's going to help neutralize the pH. If we don't have a lot of that buffer, then again, our pH is going to be low. Sometimes we might see our bicarbonate be really high, and that can be to compensate for a high CO2. So for a respiratory acidosis, sometimes the kidneys will try and hold on to bicarbonate so that it can try and bring that pH up. And that is kind of that component of compensation, right? And then, of course, we're looking at our oxygen status if it is an arterial gas. If it's not an arterial gas, we're going to be trending oxygenation from our pulse oximeter, okay? So remember, your pH first. Is it normal? Is it high or is it low? Your CO2, is it normal? If Is it high? If it's high and your pH is low, we're thinking respiratory acidosis. If your pH is high and your CO2 is low, then your baby is probably overventilated. A respiratory alkalosis in a newborn is oftentimes related. It's an iatrogenic cause, meaning we cause it and we need to wean our vent. Okay. Then when we're thinking about our bicarbonate, so if our pH is low and our bicarb is low, then that is a metabolic acidosis, right? All right, let's practice this blood gas together. So our pH is 7.23. So think to yourself, is that high, is that low, or is that normal? Okay. Our CO2 is 58. So again, is that high, is that low, is that normal? And our oxygen, this is an arterial blood gas, is 41. And our bicarbonate is 24.3. We have a base deficit of minus 3. So let's talk it through together. So our pH is 7.23. That tells us there's a component of acidosis, right? And so what we have to try and figure out is what is the primary problem causing this acidosis? Is it a respiratory acidosis or is it a metabolic acidosis? Now, our CO2 being 58 tells us, okay, this baby is holding on to a lot of carbon dioxide and that is pulling our pH down. A lot of acid creates more acidosis. Uh, our our bicarbonate is 24.3, so that's normal. The bicarb is within the normal range, so it's an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. And in this case, there's also a degree of hypoxemia. So the baby's oxygen levels in this arterial blood is pretty low. So we're going to want to look at how much oxygen are we giving the baby, maybe giving the baby more oxygen, looking at our ventilation overall to see does this baby need an increased amount of inspiratory pressure? Does this baby need to be intubated? The clinical context is going to be important with this patient. Okay. Let's practice one more. Okay. All right. So for this baby, your pH is 7.52, your CO2 is 28, and your bicarbonate is 22.8. This is a capillary blood gas. So the oxygen is not going to be reliable. So we'll say that our pulse oximeter is reading 97%. Okay. So let's talk it through together. Our pH is 7.52. So that is high, right? That is alkalosis. That is a very high pH for a baby. Our CO2 is 28. That is pretty low. 
So that is a low CO2 for the baby. So the baby's blowing off a lot of CO2 and that is bringing the pH up really high. And our bicarbonate is 22.8. So that is considered normal. So in this case, we need to wean however much ventilation this baby is getting. Maybe this baby's intubated and ready to be extubated, but this could very likely be iatrogenic respiratory alkalosis. Or if the baby wasn't on supplemental oxygen, we need to kind of figure out what's going on. Is this baby really tachypnic where they're blowing off a lot of CO2? So uh, weaning the vent would certainly be the first step. Now, I lied, let's do one more. So you are caring for a baby and their blood gas, it's a capillary blood gas, is 7.21. CO2 is 39 and bicarbonate is 16. Now let's interpret this one together. So our pH 7.21 is low, it's acidosis. And our CO2 is 39, which is within the normal range of 35 to 45. So that is actually normal. And then our bicarb is 16, which is low. Normal is more like 22 to 26. So this is a uncompensated metabolic acidosis. And how can we support babies with metabolic acidosis? Well, that gets a little bit more complicated. We want to identify what is causing the acidosis. Why is this baby having metabolic acidosis? Very preterm babies commonly have renal tubular acidosis. They lose a lot of base from their kidneys. So that is a common reason we can see it with preterm babies, but there can be other reasons too. If there's poor perfusion and anaerobic metabolism, then we have a lot of lactic acid contributing to the acidosis. If the baby is really cold or hypoglycemic, that can contribute to metabolic acidosis. If there's an infection, that can definitely contribute to metabolic acidosis. So there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to metabolic acidosis. I hope that this was a helpful review for you about blood gas interpretation and blood gas analysis. Next time we will be talking about neonatal blood pressure. So that's a really hot topic and that one I'll probably need my notes for. So I'll see you next time there. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe so that you get more of these videos so that I know that you like them. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.